Hi. Welcome to our lesson on U.S. history since 1900. I'm so glad you could join me today. We will be covering a lot of history today. America was involved in two world wars during the 1900s, and was involved in conflicts in Korea and Vietnam because of concerns with communism. America made many important advances in technology in the 1900s, and even sent multiple missions with astronauts to explore the moon, over 50 years ago. More recently, we will talk a bit about America's battle with terrorism, since the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. As you can see, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started by taking a look at America's involvement in World War I. World War I was sometimes referred to as, the war to end all wars. The war lasted from 1914 to 1918. Great Britain, France, Italy, and other countries, were fighting against Germany, the Ottoman Empire, and Austria-Hungary. The United States entered World War I in 1917, when two million American soldiers were sent to France to help end the war. The president at that time was President Woodrow Wilson. Unfortunately, the war to end all wars did not live up to its name, and many more wars would follow in the decades that followed. As World War I was drawing to a close, a global influenza pandemic broke out. That pandemic would stretch until 1920, but then in the 1920s, the economy of the United States became very strong. This era is sometimes referred to as, the Roaring Twenties. But then in 1929, the stock market crashed, and people lost most of their money. Many of the banks would close as well, as a result of the stock market crash. This began an era called, the Great Depression, which would last until 1940. In this era, many businesses closed, and millions of people lost their jobs. American families struggled with very little money, and very little food at this time. By 1932, despair was at an all-time high in America. The Depression left many Americans feeling hopeless. In November of 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected President of the United States. By the time of his inauguration, in March of 1933, most of the banks in America had closed, and 13 million people were unemployed. In his inaugural speech, President Roosevelt famously told Americans, that, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. At that time, the depression had reached its depth, and Roosevelt began working very hard to help the country recover. Roosevelt launched a series of new programs, financial reforms, and public projects that were referred to as, the New Deal. By 1935, there was the beginning of a recovery for America. Roosevelt's leadership was appreciated by Americans, and he would ultimately be elected four times, making Roosevelt the longest-serving president of the United States. During the 1930s, Germany caused tensions to rise in Europe, as they continued to expand their country's territory by taking over neighboring countries. Nazi Germany, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, became more and more aggressive throughout the 1930s. In 1939, Germany invaded Poland. This invasion marked the beginning of World War II, as Great Britain and France declared war against Germany. Later, Germany joined with Italy and Japan in fighting other countries. The United States tried to stay out of this war, at first, because of how difficult World War I had been. But 
Then on December 7, 1941, Japan launched a surprise attack on America's naval fleet that was in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. President Roosevelt called December 7, 1941 a day that would live in infamy. He meant that this day would always be remembered for how terrible it was. The attack killed over 2,400 Americans. In a passionate speech, President Roosevelt asked Congress to declare war against Japan. This caused the United States to enter World War II to fight Germany, Italy, and Japan. In 1944, the United States led the invasion of Europe to free Europe from German control. Shortly before the end of the war, President Roosevelt died, in April of 1945. Harry Truman took over as president, after Roosevelt died. Germany surrendered the next month, in May of 1945, but the war with Japan continued on. The loss of life in World War II was very significant for all of the countries involved. And so, after developing the atomic bomb, the United States decided to bomb the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in early August, 1945, to try and bring a quick end to the war with Japan. The Japanese emperor did make the decision to surrender within one week of the first bombing, but the Japanese didn't sign the formal unconditional surrender agreement until September of 1945. One of the generals for the American Army, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, became an American war hero after World War II. His popularity with the American people led to him serving two terms as president, from 1953 to 1961. After the end of World War II, the Soviet Union and the United States emerged as the two global superpowers. The Soviet Union, seen here in red, was made up of 15 separate republics. Their capital city was in Moscow, in the Russian Republic, with Joseph Stalin as the ruling dictator. Stalin ordered the development of the Soviet Union's first atomic bomb, which they completed in 1949. The next 40 years was an era referred to as the Cold War. During this time, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union were very high, and the threat of a nuclear war was always present. During the Cold War era, the main concern of the United States was the continued spread of communism. Under communism, in the Soviet Union, the government owned almost all property. The United States has a market economy, or what is known as a capitalist economy. In a capitalist economy, property and businesses are owned by the people. America and its allies wanted to see the spread of democracy and capitalist economies around the world, and they were very concerned about the growth of communism. After World War II, Korea split into North and South Korea. North Korea adopted a communist government, and they were supported by the Soviet Union. The US and its allies supported South Korea. In 1950, North Korea attacked South Korea, and the United States joined South Korea to fight against North Korea, and the Soviet Union supported North Korea in the conflict. Both sides fought until 1953, when both sides agreed to stop fighting. From 1959 to 1975, the military from the United States joined with South Vietnam, to fight against North Vietnam, and the spread of communism into South Vietnam. But in 1975, the war ended when the communist military took over Saigon, 
the capital of South Vietnam. When the United States left, the entire country of Vietnam soon came under communist rule. The war in Vietnam took the lives of many American soldiers, and many were still missing at the end of the war. One positive outcome from the Cold War era, were significant advances in technology. Much of this, came out of a race between the United States, and the Soviet Union, to develop and advance the ability for space travel. The Soviet Union did come out ahead in a number of firsts, but in July of 1969, the United States launched the Apollo 11 mission, that sent American astronauts to be the first human beings to ever explore the surface of the moon. Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin, were the first men to walk on the moon. In all, six different Apollo missions successfully landed men on the moon, with the last mission being Apollo 17, in December of 1972. To date, no human being has returned to the moon, and only 12 Americans have the distinction of walking on the moon. The space race created a need for making smaller electronics, and better computer systems. Today, we all benefit from many of the advances made by the space program of the United States. In more recent history, America and a number of its allies became very concerned when the country of Iraq, invaded the neighboring country of Kuwait in 1990. The concern was for the world's oil reserves in Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and other neighboring countries. Many countries did not want these oil reserves that are used by countries all over the world, to be under the control of Iraq. In early 1991, the United States and several other countries entered into the Gulf War. This war did not last long, and within a few months, all of Iraq's troops withdrew from Kuwait. One of America's most difficult days in recent history, happened on September 11, 2001. On this day, violent extremists on four separate commercial airline flights, took control of the airplanes to crash them into buildings. These terrorists crashed two planes into the twin towers of the World Trade Center, in New York City, and a third plane into the Pentagon, which is the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense. The passengers and surviving crew members of the fourth plane heard what had happened on the other planes, and decided to do something to prevent the terrorists from hitting their intended target in Washington, D.C. The passengers and crew fought the terrorists, and the plane ultimately crashed into this field in rural Pennsylvania, thwarting the terrorists' plans to hit another target in Washington, D.C. Almost 3,000 people died on September 11, making these coordinated attacks the worst attack in the history of the United States. These events marked the beginning of America's ongoing global fight against terrorism. The terrorist attacks on September 11th were so awful. So many people died. Yes, it was a very difficult day for America. But it's important that we remember that day, and all of the people who lost their life in the attacks. I hope that nothing like that ever happens again. Yes. I feel the same way. A lot has happened in America since 1900, and there are quite a few civics test questions that we covered in this lesson. Would you please lead us in a review of those questions? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. Okay. So there were 8 civics test questions covered in this lesson. 
Let's review those now. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, or the Gulf War. Who was president during World War I? Woodrow Wilson. Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? Franklin Roosevelt. Who did the United States fight in World War II? Japan, Germany, and Italy. Before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? World War II. What is the economic system in the United States? Capitalist economy or market economy? During the Cold War, what was the main concern of the United States? Communism What major event happened on September 11, 2001, in the United States? Terrorists attacked the United States. That's all of the civics test questions for this unit. Remember, you can always review the civics test questions by using the flashcards in the app. Thanks for taking part in today's lesson. We hope to see you for a future lesson.